HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update. A presentation took place at Hopkinton High School addressing non-tobacco nicotine delivery products. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, some happenings in town you should know about. The 2018 Hopkinton Town election has come and gone. Here is a look at this year's results. The two Board of Selectmen seats were claimed by Irfan Nasrula, and Brian Hur was re-elected for another three years. The two available seats on the planning board were claimed by Deborah S. Feinbrug and Barry Larson Marlowe. The two available seats on the school committee were won by Amanda Fargiano and Meg Tyler. The open seat on the Board of Library Trustees was claimed by Stanley Polnick and Michael James King will remain on the Board of Health after claiming the open seat. This past week, the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board kept up with the post-town election tradition and reorganized. Yeah, I would like to nominate Claire Wright for the chair position for the Board of Selectmen for 2000, uh, for the next year, 2018-19. Are, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Congratulations. Hey, Chair, Chair would uh, go for nominations for Vice Chairman. Mr. Chair, I nominate Brendan Tedstone to serve as Vice Chair for the next year. Second. Any further nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Congratulations. Excellent. Okay. Let's, and I would just like to thank uh, thank everyone for the support for this year. It was uh, I I really in, I enjoyed being chair. It was uh, it was hard work, but it was um, um, very satisfying. I, I really appreciate the, the teamwork that everybody had and all working together. Mr. Camalo, you did one for Ms. Lazarus. Thank you very much for your for your support and guidance. It was uh, we got through a, a tough a tough uh, budget season. But we did it, and um, the town meeting went very well. And I want to thank the uh, the um, citizens of Hopkinton for supporting me this this past year. And I and I was um, grateful and, and humbled by the uh, by the job. And uh, and I want to thank everybody very very much. And I would like to thank John Catino for the year of fine strong leadership that he's given to the town. And I'd like to again welcome our newest member, Mr. Nasrullah, and our Oldest, newest, or newest, oldest member, Mr. The cranky old guy <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> That's years of service, not <laughs> oldest. not age, uh, Sorry, Mr. Her. Chairman, thank you. Emeritus, <laughs> once removed, four times removed. <laughs> I just need to know the proper way to address you. One item on the agenda today is the uh, board reorganization. But before that, I would like to welcome our two newest members and congratulate them, both mm -hmm. Deb and Mary. Welcome, congrats. Any questions procedurally before we get started? No, I just wanted to thank you for uh, hosting a meeting, though, for those reasons. I think it was really important that we did this, and, uh, and it made a lot of sense. I was very respectful to the voters and very transparent. I, I appreciate, appreciate that. it. Just throwing my support behind the approach. Thank you to H. Camp for coming. Yes, yes. 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 Articulate positions uh, has been fantastic. So I appreciate it. Great choice. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nomination. Um, uh, 
candidly um, uh, thrilled, and I'd like to uh, point out too that this board has not had a woman as a chairman for as long as I have been participating and watching. So I'm a little um, especially excited about that. Not that it had to be me, but I'd like to see that we are um, making some changes in leadership, not, not pushing anybody out, but including more people. Um, and I did talk to um, to Mr. Dion before this, and uh, I so appreciate this board, all of the people on this board, and the way that we have um, worked collegially and uh, respectfully and openly, and I look forward to making sure that that stays. The second item here is to turn in the vice chair. Also similar to what we did with the chairman, I'll look at the four nominations. I nominate Fran Young. I'll second that. Very quick, Frank. Do <laughs> <laughs> you accept the vice chairman? <laughs> I would accept the vice chairman. Yes. All those opposed, all those abstain, all those <laughs> all those in favor of Amy for vice chair, signify by saying aye. Can I do two uh, votes? No. no. <laughs> Hopkinton Hillers girls tennis has completed TVL play with an undefeated record. I recently caught up with head coach Lynn Calkins and this year's only senior, Elizabeth Cooperman. The Hopkinton Hillers girls tennis team took down Holliston on Wednesday, May 23rd and improved to 16 and 0 overall. The Hillers finished the regular season undefeated in TVL play. Um, this is my second year coaching the Hopkinton girls varsity tennis team. Um, right now we are 16 and 0. We have one match left in the season. Um, we recently clinched the TVL title, um, which we're thrilled about. Um, we set up a lot of goals in the beginning of the season, both individually and as a team. And so far, we have reached, met most of those goals, I'm happy to say. We have a fa fairly young team, and um, going into the season, I knew some of the players. Um, there were a lot of unknowns, a lot of question marks as far as our doubles teams. Um, we had a player return after taking a year off from tennis, um, and that is Jane Stillwell, um, who's greatly um, helped to improve our team that allowed everybody to um, basically move down a position on the team so that really strengthened our lineup. Um, so given the youth on our team um, and then some of the returners and Jane uh, that all contributed to the success that we've been finding recently. My senior year so far has been pretty awesome. I mean coming out of not winning the TVL last year to being undefeated this year is a great thing to have. I mean the players on this team, every person brings a different aspect to the team as a whole. I mean, as Coach was saying, as the team is pretty young, it was great to be able to lead them and see how well they're going to be in the years coming. The Hillers have one last tough challenge this regular season before heading to the playoffs. We have one more match on Friday versus Division II reigning state champ Wayland High School. So it's not quite over, but um, as of today, uh, we are 16-0. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have Hiller baseball and softball highlights. Matt Clark has our HCAM insider, plus a look at a presentation at Hopkinton High School regarding non-tobacco nicotine products. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Oh 
always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School, along with Hopkinton Youth and Family Services and the Hopkinton Health Department, hosted a presentation regarding non-tobacco nicotine delivery products. Here's a look. In the course of the year, about a 2.1 area that I've seen a significant spike in, in uh, discipline and discipline referrals to around vaping. Right. Tonight's presentation is around uh, issues that we're seeing at the high school in regards to vaping and jeweling or uh, what we call non-tobacco related nicotine products. Uh, it's been a group of, of individuals from the Hopkinton Police Department, Hopkinton Youth and Family Services, as well as the high school that have kind of come together, as well as the Hopkinton Health Department, to put together this presentation. We have um, <clears throat> a few experts in the field, as well as some school officials that are going to talk about some trends that we're seeing at the high school and talk about some of the education that we're providing for some of our students around this topic. In fake tax, the claim by Jewel is it's more natural. It doesn't have this. The problem is basically combusting glycerin, glycerol, turns this into aldehydes of aberrant. And that's what causes it. So it's a higher temperature. But sometimes we don't know how stable the electrical wiring and the heat is in some of these pods that they put in the jewel. So this is the concern. Like, are they still getting acrylate as well? We have Dr. Lester Hartman, um, who is a uh, works in pediatrics at the Westwood Mansfield uh, Children's Hospital, uh, as well as DJ Wilson, who, who works for the, um, the MMA. He's a, a controlled tobacco officer, as well as Justin Palmerville, one of our assistant principals from the school. And so you have to go outside. About an hour later, it started smelling something. You know, kind of flowery smell. And I don't know, what's that smell? My two daughters were laughing their heads off. Matt's vaping in the house, Dad. Here I'm doing this, and it was Matt, my nephew, who was vaping in the house, and he would do, I, I learned it from him, okay? So I'm going to pass this around to you, a nice little light that goes on with it, too. It's digital. So, so is there, is there fuel in it's smokeless? It's, it, there's, there, well, it's vapor, but it's very small amounts of vapor. So it's not like the billowy stuff of 10 <coughs> So you're not going to see it fly all over the classroom, you know, with it. Yeah, so we put this out for, to students uh, in our uh, weekly memo to the students as well as uh, through our newsletter to parents as well. So we're hoping for uh, as many people as can, that can come to come out. If not, then we'll, we'll obviously HCAM is, is, is taping it so it'll be available for anybody to watch it. Different, there, some are cheaper than others, some are less well built than others maybe as well. So there's no more rings like anything. Um, that's, like I said, natural oil. How is the oil natural in your lungs? I call the Jewel Care Center. In, and it turns out it was in the Philippines. And I asked the guy, I said, is mango okay for your lungs? And the guy couldn't give me an answer. We don't know what mango can do long-term lungs. It's not your stomach. It's not your stomach, you know? Let's not confuse the stomach with the lungs. Starting on July 1st, the legal age to buy any tobacco or nicotine delivery product in Hopkinton will increase from 18 to 21. It has been another great season of Hiller Sports this spring, with most teams qualified or in contention for a playoff spot. Here's a look at the latest news. On Wednesday, May 16th, the Hillers baseball team was on the road in Ashland. Top of the second, one on, two outs, Ben McKenzie at the plate. One, two pitch. And this is up the left side and past the reach of the shortstop. Kelly will score a 1-0 lead for the Hillers, an RBI single for McKenzie. Hillers led 1-0 heading to the bottom of the second, but Ashland responded. Two on, two outs for the Clockers. And this is right up the middle. That's going to get through into center field. There's one around, and here comes the second run. And the throw in is caught. And he is going to be called safe. Rankatori had the ball, but wasn't able to place the tag on him. So that turns into a two RBI hit for Trevor DePeron. 
The Trevor DePeron base hit gives Ashland the 2-1 lead, and they never looked back, taking the game 6-1. The following day, the Hillers grabbed a 16-4 road win against Westwood and improved to 11-5 overall. On Monday, May 21st, Hillers softball took on Norton. Norton pitcher Kelly Nelson not only pitched a gem, but had a two-run homer in the top of the first. A rough inning of defense for the Hillers as this one's driven into center field to the fence. That is gone. A Norton Lancers two-run homer. And just like that, it is a 4-0 game. Kelly Nelson, the pitcher, goes yard. Not only can she pitch, but she can certainly hit. Hillers trailed 12-0 heading to the bottom of the seventh, but were able to do a little late game damage. I'm surprised she's not at least leading as this one is hit in the air over to left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. McIntyre around second, heading to third. She's going to be waved around and will score. It's a 12-1 game and a stand-up triple for Katie Holly. Great piece of hitting there. And there will be no shutout for Kelly Nelson today. Norton took the game 12-2. The playoff-bound Hillers are now 10-5 on the season. Norton has 14 wins and one loss overall. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, May 25th at 5 p.m., award-winning singer and songwriter Jane Fallon performs her inspiring and uplifting music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Hopkinton resident and musician Amanda Maffei about her music and work in town on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, May 28th at 8 p.m., Mary Arnott talks with Sharon Liznow, director of the Hopkinton Respite Center, on a brand new episode of All About Hopkinton. On Tuesday, May 29th at 8 p.m., Professor Jeff Skillings gives a poignant lecture on the great legacy of President Abraham Lincoln on a brand new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, May 30th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a brand new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, May 31st at 7 p.m., the class of 2018 is honored for their achievements in the Senior Awards Night, live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, June 1st at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Class of 2018 Commencement Ceremony will air live on HCAM Ed. Congratulations and good luck to the Class of 2018. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Baseball vs. Ashland game, as well as the HHS Drama Ensemble's One Act Play Festival will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
decided to honor Pam Wexlax. And I would like to... I'd like to ask uh, both Mike Manning, who is chair of the Appropriations Committee, and Jean Birchman, who is chair of the School Committee, to say a few words. I would like to say how pleased I am that Pam Waxlax has been recognized by receiving this year's Moderator's Award. Uh, Pam, unfortunately, Pam is stepping down this year because she's moving to Colorado, so the timeliness is really important, and uh, so, again, we're just very happy that she did get this award. Um, the attention to detail that she brings is tremendous and you need look no further than the very long and comprehensive appropriations committee report that's in your hands to see testimony and evidence to her work and her work ethic so we owe her a great debt of service for the thousands of hours that she's committed to the town but more importantly she the way in which she conducts herself and conducts business is a role model to all of us on day one of the annual town meeting the articles featured the fiscal year 2019 budget, the Main Street Corridor project, and the Turf Field project. Article 8 by the town manager, the town budget, featured some discussion about the school budget after concerns about potential cuts to programs. I was wondering what other reductions uh, the school systems looked at, if there were reductions that were eventually nixed or other things that they discussed. That they discussed. So um, one thing that comes to mind are services that affect what we call specials rotation. So outside of the actual academic classroom program and the teacher delivering that program, we have a number of really valuable services that are offered to students. And we had to really look hard at what, for example, one that comes to mind, um, as Mr. Mr. Ghosh just came up to, to help me out here, was um, around technology. And this was a service that we really needed five, six years ago because it was all so new to us um, that our teachers are feeling so much more comfortable with now um, that although it would be, again, as soon as you get rid of somebody, the other people have to pick up what they do, because it didn't have the impact or we, didn't, we evaluated that it didn't have the impact at the classroom level, um, I'm going to turn it over to you to go through those. Um, that was something that we were able to do comfortably. The 2019 budget was passed and is set at $88,886,985. Article 20 by the DPW discussed the Main Street Corridor project. Discussion consisted of concerns about parking and undergrounding utilities. Uh, handed out the undergrounding would stop at the fire station and police station but the depictions seem to show no poles to the west of that as well. Um, could you just clarify, are there going to be poles to the west of the police station? The scope of the undergrounding is in front of the police station up to Hayden Road. If you want uh, $14 million of improvements to the downtown for $3 million, then you vote yes for this. Uh, er since I moved here 15 years ago, Virtually every business along Main Street has improved itself, from Bill's Pizza to Hopkins Drug to every other building along the way has made improvements. The town now, at this point in our growth, is overdue to make this investment in our growing community and to keep the downtown the center of our community life. So I vote in favor of this. The article passed. Article 22 by the school committee regarded the turf field project at the middle school, high school fields. If the, if the article passes, construction will begin at the end of the sports season and is anticipated to be finished in early fall. So if you can move to the next slide. So the project cost. Uh, we went out to bid and we do have the project cost. It's $3.5 million. Again, thanks to grant funding from CPC, we will be assuming that that is voted tonight as well. We'll be able to reduce that cost almost by half by $1.7 million, making the, the cost of the borrowing $1.8 million. Selectman Todd Sestari was against the article due to financial concerns. Mm -hmm. The last slide shows the actual percentages of reimbursement from the state. We can see that it went from 100% back in 2002-2003, and this year's projection is 
So right now, with the requested CPC borrowings, we're actually going to be borrowing more than we would be collecting in the coming year. And I don't think that's good practice. Question Thank you. Question for the Board of Selectmen. Um, I think you said initially that they were not, they didn't need to weigh in on this. No, they, they can weigh in as in but individuals, they, but there's no okay, requirement so, that they so vote So I guess as a board. I want to confirm that Todd Sestari was weighing in as an individual, because I don't think there's an individual in this room that could come prepared with a slideshow integrated into the projector and ready to roll. So it, it, didn't, it didn't look like an individual speaking. A few student athletes and coaches were in attendance to express the need for the turf fields. I, I am very for this. Um, I know countless friends of mine who played for our school, even who played for other schools. I'm currently playing club soccer at Northeastern, and I have a couple of friends on the team who played in the TBL and remember our grass soccer field because it was so bad. And I feel like that's a point of pride for our school and for our community where we should have fields that we feel comfortable inviting other teams, inviting the community to play on. Um, I just, it speaks to how we are as a community and that's why I'm very for this, uh, this motion to turf the fields as soon as possible. The article passed a standing vote 288 to 61. On day two of the annual town meeting, Article 26 by the Community Preservation Committee raised some discussion about a proposed $150,000 for a dog park at Hayden Row. There are concerns about dog parks, as I'm sure most people know. Um, it excludes a lot of, fam of, of uh, community members. For instance, people who are afraid of dogs or that, who don't like them. Therefore, people of all ages, particularly the elderly and young children, will not be comfortable there. Some community dog parks have found that they cannot allow children at all. Medway's community dog park does not allow children. Franklin's community dog park, children must be 16 years of age or accompanied by an adult. The dog park funding ultimately failed 64 to 184, but the other five items in the article passed. Article 27 by the Community Preservation Committee also raised some discussion regarding item C, which appropriated $600,000 for lighting at the Fruit Street Fields. Selectman Todd Sestari spoke out against the item. Um, as I look at the balances in the buckets, I see that between passive and active recreation and the undesignated bucket, uh, combined we'd have over $700,000 available. I would suggest that this be something that comes out of those buckets or two buckets.